the former Prime Minister of Israel, Naftali Bennett. Welcome. Pleasure to have you on the show uh, on the, at this table. Um, let's start with Iran, because it does seem to be a major escalation. What do you think was behind it? Because it feels as though Israel has enough on its hands right now, trying to deal with how to conclude this war, what to do uh, in Gaza. Uh, what do you think motivated this strike? Well, obviously, I can't comment on the strike itself. What I can say is Iran is an octopus of terror. Its head is in Tehran, and then it sends its tentacles all around Israel and the Middle East. Uh, in Lebanon, they have Hezbollah. In Gaza, they have Islamic Jihad and a bit of Hamas, uh, the Houthis, all around. And they've been pounding Israel using their arms, while their head was sort of um, immune. So the age of immunity for Iran's head is over. It doesn't make sense to keep on uh, fighting just the, the tips of the fingertips of, of these arms while letting Iran itself get away from it. Um, but I'm, is there a danger that this escalation then triggers an Iranian reaction and Israel has to get, dis, you know, not distracted, but has to now turn its focus on that issue? You see, Iran is already f in full-fledged war against Israel starting October 7th and, and before, but it's a one-sided uh, boxing match. They're, they're up hitting us, and they've not uh, been on the receiving side. They just hit us with their uh, octopus arms. So if anything... Um, this sort of move is, is, is the right approach, but needs to be done uh, in a persistent way because it turns out that Iranian leadership is much uh, softer and does not want to pay its own price. Uh, they love using other people's lives. Right. They send their proxies, but when it's Iranian lives at stake, suddenly they become much more timid. Even Hezbollah has been fairly cautious in terms of, if you listen to Nasrallah's speech, he, he wished Hamas well, but it was clear he was not going to help them in any way. I think that's a, a fairly good interpretation of uh, Nasrallah. He understands that if he were to enter war on behalf of Iran against Israel, the people who would pay the price are the Lebanese. And since Nasrallah portends himself, uh, portrays himself as the protector of Lebanon, in fact, he would become the destroyer of Lebanon if he would make that mistake to go to full-out war with Israel. Let me ask you about Israel's war strategy itself, because you, early on, uh, outlined a very different approach uh, than what Bibi Netanyahu did, which I, I certainly thought was very in, in interesting and innovative, which was flush out Hamas, siege them, force them to come out of their holes, rather than this very massive, essentially, ground invasion. Um, do you think, at this point at least, they could, they could move to that strategy in the remaining parts? Because it feels like to get at these last 1,000 or 2,000 uh, Hamas militants, they're, they're paying an enormous price in terms of radicalization of Palestinians, radicalization of the Arab world. Well, uh, first of all, it's true. I presented an alternative strategy, but once my government, uh, the government of Israel, adopted its strategy, I stand behind it. At this point, uh, there are basically two options the way I see it. One is to uh, flush out Hamas, or actually have the citizens of Rafah leave, and then you're left with Hamas in Rafah and can deal with them uh, isolated uh, on a siege-based uh, tactic, or go in. I'm, I'm not going to comment uh, what the government is going to do. Uh, both options can make sense. Yes, it's tough. Uh, it's, uh, it involves a lot of friction uh, that, that we've uh, been seeing over the past half year. Do you think there are a lot of people who believe that Bibi Netanyahu is prolonging this war because he knows that the majority of Israeli public, vast majority of Israeli public say the minute the war ends, we want Netanyahu out, which means, I mean, he has an incentive not to have the war end. Well, the war takes time uh, for, for the very fundamental reason that we have uh, uh, thousands and thousands of Hamas uh, terrorist militants embedded within uh, civilians, and because we're not cavalier about civilian lives, uh, we, we have to be very selective and very cautious and slow, and it takes much more time. And we have the, uh, a, a huge undertaking of uh, dismantling the underground uh, tunnel, uh, terror tunnel operation that uh, Hamas built for 20 years. So it, it takes time. Uh, I do think that 
we need to speed things up. Uh, we don't have an unlimited uh, clock out there. And, uh, you know, if it were up for me, to me, I, I, I would move much quicker on uh, the various uh, phases. But do you think Prime Minister Netanyahu is prolonging the war because he knows his political future is at stake? Uh, I think he's not alone in the um, war cabinet. So I, I, I think that the decisions are being made for the right reasons. Uh, you know, one can disagree with one decision or another, but by and large, the goal is to defeat Hamas. We can't finish this war uh, when Hamas is standing. We can't have uh, an organization that uh, explicitly said that it wants to destroy the Jewish uh, nation and has done the worst thing possible and said that it's going to try and do it again and again. So we have to eliminate Hamas. So let me press you on one issue, which is um, you did have a different strategy. The one that Bibi Netanyahu uh, uh, has adopted has resulted in the destruction of about 60 percent of Gaza. It has resulted in 35 odd thousand uh, uh, civilians dying. It has resulted in more aid workers dying than in all the Gaza wars combined. It has resulted in more journalists dying than in all the Gaza wars combined. At this point, 1.1 million people are on the verge of famine. Surely this, is, this has been counterproductive for Israel, but you're still, I understand you need to outside of uh, Israel support the government, but I mean, it seems like the strategy has come with huge costs, and I'm not sure the benefits outweigh them. There's one goal, and uh, or two goals actually. Uh, one goal is to bring the hostages home, and the other goal is to fully eliminate the Hamas, which is a genocidal uh, terror organization. And there's no easy way to do it. Um, I, you know, regardless of the fact that I presented a different strategy, I'm not sure my strategy was better. It, uh, you know, you you never know. But what does it mean to? I, I understand people keep saying destroy Hamas. Well, you've 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 destroyed tens of thousands of their uh, of their fighters. Ultimately, what is Hamas? It is the idea of armed resistance. Aren't you radicalizing? Aren't you creating, as Donald Rumsfeld would say, aren't you creating more terrorists than you're killing? No, I don't think so. Um, people always say it's an idea, and what can you do with an idea? But also Nazism was an idea. And once you eradicate uh, the regime, and the, there's no territory where that regime controls, and then it becomes uh, you know, an idea that can fade away, or there still are some neo-Nazis, but we don't think that Nazism right now is a problem. Likewise here, look, they were radical enough uh, under uh, a much uh, a more generous uh, period and regime, uh, yet they conducted the October 7th uh, attacks. And, and unfortunately, I have to say that um, a, a vast majority of Gaza citizens support those attacks. This is not to say that we're going to try and uh, target citizens. We don't. It is to say that the uh, basic necessity is to eradicate Hamas. And what does it mean? It means to either kill the combatants or to capture them and then uh, move them out to Qatar or something. So I, I, I could envision and, and thousands of, of these uh, uh, terrorists getting on a ship going to Qatar, and that would spell the end of the war. But, but then what do you do in, in Gaza? Because at that point, again, you've so radicalized Palestinians, they're not going to be willing to ride on the back of Israeli tanks, and, and the PA is not going to come in and govern the Arab. The, uh, this is what I hear from Arab countries. We're not going to be willing to touch that. So you've created a situation where Israel will have to occupy Gaza again. No, I uh, disagree. I think uh, the key to success is to take away the hope of Hamas uh, resurgence. Once that hope is gone, then there is a process of de-radicalization, which means that we'll need that the education and media in Gaza will stop teaching the uh, little children in, in uh, Gaza that the uh, Jews are the Satan and pigs. They've just and been bombed for the last th uh, months. So was Israel. Dresden, so was Berlin, yeah. so was uh, uh, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and Tokyo. But America didn't have and to live side by side Japanese. You guys, I mean, you have these which, Palestinians are not going anywhere. Which all the, the more means that we have to get the job done. All right, uh, I've got to ask you before we go. Uh, are you going to run for prime minister? Are you I've not decided yet. Um, I had planned on a decade off uh, from politics after my uh, decade in politics. It's uh, a very tough occupation. 
uh, but my country is is uh, not in great shape right now, so I'll think about it and I'll let you know here on, on this uh, on this show, Farid. Is that a promise? Uh, almost. <laughs> um, Naftali Bennett, pleasure to have you on, sir. Thank you.